Hello friends, again I am your friend Tanvir Ajseeb and this module is about conceptual art. The conceptual art is a broad area of the art which encompasses a variety of ideas, especially in visual art. Before we go to the definitions that have been put forward by the scholars as well as practitioners of conceptual art, let me start with an anecdote. A story for the sake of simplicity so that you also take some interest in how conceptual art came into being. The word conceptual art as itself suggests that it is concept and art which makes the conceptual art. What do we mean by that? Now as I said, let me show you a picture. Now this picture is of a urinal but at the same time it's the picture of one of the most costly artworks of the world. Don't be surprised, it is an artwork. This work appeared in 1917 and was created by the artist Marcel Duchamp. Duchamp was a Dadaist who was partly in the beginning of his career associated with Cubist movement when he created Cubist paintings. But immediately after that, he started creating art out of the ready-made objects that he sometimes bought or sometimes found here or there. How do we see this work? And what, does it tell, what does this work tell us? What does it justify? How do we justify the word concept here? Where is the art here? Well, that's what the work is actually about. It's anti-art, anti-art. It's about the concept and not about the product. That was perhaps the claim. Oh, that was the claim of Duchamp when he placed this urinal for the first time in the confines of gallery in New York, the famous Armory Show. But what do we mean when we say, what do we, what do we understand when we look at this work of art? It sounds ambiguous, no? It looks like any other urine, except the thing that it has an insignia on it, which says R. Mutt. But what, is, what does a urinal have to do with a gallery? And how does it qualify for an artwork? It looks very good inside a washroom, but here it's placed inside a gallery, inside a space which is essentially meant for and built for the artworks. How, it is a, how does it qualify to be a conceptual artwork? This work, when exhibited for the first time, created an uproar in the world of art. <coughs> what did it do? Sorry, what did it do? It subverted the notions of art, the idea of art being beautiful, of idea of art being, being a thing that is being created. An idea that art is a thing of beauty, the so-called Western notion of beauty, that it has to be pleasant, it has to look good, it has to abide by the conventions set forth by the aesthetic norms of Western culture that were actually jotted down in the 19th century by a person called Baumgarten. How does Duchamp come to this point? What prompted him to create a work out of an ordinary urinal whose function, as we all know, is to be in a washroom. But here, it is just in front of us, like it was in front of the viewers when they confronted it for the first time, baffled and amazed, at the same time shocked, seeing a urinal in the gap. What did it tell us? Why does, why does a urinal, how does urinal, let me reiterate the question and repeat it to you, how does a urinal qualify for a work of art? 
But what precedes that question? What precedes this question is rather what precedes this question is another question and equally important. And perhaps the question which should be asked and was asked when the urinal was first placed inside a gallery is what is art? How do we come to terms with the concept of art when we see an artwork inside a museum space, inside a gallery space? What parameters justify with what kind of accountability that is being put in place do we come to a consensus within ourselves when we confront a pleasant or a volatile picture say for example a Goya or say for example a Dali or a Picasso what qualifies them to be the artworks and how do we see a urinal in the gallery and accept, accept and reconcile with the fact that we have just counter come out of the gallery after spending a precious amount of time of our lives and seeing a urinal. What is that? And that's the question that I said that Western art we need to go back as I do it always. We need to go back into the history of art, into the aesthetic principles that tell us that this is art and that is not. That tell us that something is beauty and something is not. That tell us that there's a marked distinction between what is pleasant to eyes and what qualifies to be an art product. There's a distinction that has been laid down by the institutions and art historians from centuries that tell us that, okay, a Mona Lisa does qualify for a work of art doesn't matter if it's a picture of a woman, it has been of course done by Leonardo da Vinci, the great Leonardo da Vinci. But what happens when the Leonardo, when beneath the Leonardo da Vinci, what if, imagine a situation, what will happen if beneath the picture, the famous painting of Mona Lisa, or for that matter, any other famous painting, say for example, a painting of Van Gogh or Picasso, or Goya or somebody else, who are considered the great artists of the world art, who are considered the masters of world art, who have created, no doubt, extremely skillful, beautiful works. Now, what if a Goya's or a Mona Lisa or a Rembrandt's, or for that matter, a Picasso's or Van Gogh's or Suda's or anybody else's painting is hanging on the wall and beneath it, a urinal of Marcel Duchamp is standing on a pedestal looking at us. What happens? Well, that's the reality that has happened when for the first time urinal was placed, as I said, it created a violent uproar. Artists and critics and other theoreticians related to culture were not ready to accept a urinal as a work of art. But what was here? What was at work here, which was different, which was subversive, which was radical, was the idea. Now, what, how does that idea unfold? How does an artist like Duchamp execute that idea and what is the justification for it? Conceptual art is the answer. And the answer is that conceptual art gives prominence lays stress, considers important the idea over the product. Going again back to the history of art, the idea is seldom taken into consideration until the advent of urinal inside the gallery. What has been taken into consideration is the external form of the painting the external view of the painting that has been communicated, idea becomes secondary and conceptual art with the help of Duchamp who sets a precedent, who lays the foundation stone of conceptual art along with other Dadaists of the 20th century say no, the product is not 
the ultimate artwork. Artwork is something that's based on a concrete idea, product, it's, it's translation into a product, it's translation into a material, it getting converted into something is secondary. To arrive at a concrete definition of conceptual art, which suggests that the idea is superior, not the artwork. So how did it begin? And how did it... Okay. The first thing about, another thing important about conceptual art is that it is anti-art. It's against art, the idea of art. When I say against the idea of art, remember I'm talking about the idea of a beauty the idea that was laid down in Western aesthetic notions by philosophers and was propagated on the basis of which museums and galleries were constructed and a certain amount of artwork was filtered, a certain amount of work which was deemed as great art or beautiful art on the basis of canonical art history that helped in calming up a line, that helped in calming up a domain within which only the works that were, that only the works that stood the scrutiny of the aesthetic principles and art historical narratives was considered as art. Rest was not art. Conceptual took up, conceptual art took on to the very idea of art that was prevalent since 18th, 19th century and that had helped in providing a canon in which very few things that were filtered out of an enormous body of the world art and were classified as folk, traditional, contemporary, modern and postmodern, Renaissance, New Classical, Baroque, etc 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 conceptual art for the first time in the history of art took on to the material aspect of art vehemently it disagreed with the notions with the western idea of art on every ground so when duchamp submitted the urinal and when it was made public for the first time it it though raised controversy and to an extreme extent but at the same time it did spark off a debate in the West about the very limitations of the word art the very limitations of the aesthetics the limitations of the idea of beauty it asked the question what is art which again went back to the ages perhaps from the inception of this world when people might have discussed about what and what is not art but let's let's in order to gain a clearer picture let me let me read out to you a few definitions put forward by the experts and the artists and the practitioners of this art in order to arrive at a point where we can take a few examples like Dushan and talk about in some detail about the aspects that formed the idea of conceptual art. So the first definition is of Tony Godfrey. When asked what is conceptual art, the answer comes as this. Conceptual art is not about forms or material, but about ideas and meanings. So as I said, Duchamp was not talking about forms. At the same time he was, because he was critiquing the form, the very form he was critiquing the very idea of material. He's not laying stress on, as I said previously, on the material aspect of art. He's least concerned about it. All he's concerned about the idea, something that we think, something that we translate on a certain medium. It cannot be defined in terms of any medium or style. As I said, that conceptual art encompasses a variety of styles. So it's not limited to one style of art because it's anti-style at the same time. When you talk, it's critiquing the entire history of the styles, the entire forms 
of art. So it's not limited. At the same time, you can see here. Let me uh, let me uh, put it uh, on record that at the same time, one can see a painting which is also conceptual art. A ready-made object which has been found like Duchamp, purchased the, the urinal from a market, second-hand market, or something that has been done by putting together things in terms of the Dadaistic art when they in terms of in terms of Dadaism and the artists of Dad and when the Dadaists created poetry, randomly picking up quotations or headlines from newspapers and magazines and arranging them in an order and reading them aloud to the people which they called poetry. It is also something that has turned down the entire western notion of art as I said previously. It challenges the traditional status of art objects as unique, collectible or sellable. Now, to this point, it also challenges the commodifying nature of art that art can be sold or bought. That art can be sold or bought like any other project, any other product in the market. It cannot be. It challenges that notion that you can buy a painting and hang it in your house. Or you can buy a painting and then sell it to somebody else. It takes on to everything that comes under the umbrella of capitalist economy of the world. This art can take a variety of forms. As I said, everyday objects, photographs, maps, videos, charts, and especially language itself, often there will be a combination of such forms. Conceptual art has had a determining effect on the thinking of most artists. This is a quote from uh, Tony Godfrey, as I said, in 1998, he writes about conceptual art. So when he says that it can be of anything, it can be a video, it can be a painting, it can be a collage, it can be a ready-made object, it can be reproduction of the same object at the same time, because the object, as I said, is not important. But the idea behind the work of art that has been translated, that has been translated with the help of a material. Material is not essential here. I will refer to the so the next definition that comes from Saul Le Witt from 1967 when conceptual art was beginning to take on, uh, beginning to take off. I will refer to the kind of art which I am involved in as a conceptual artist. In conceptual art, the idea or concept is the most important aspect of the work. As I said previously, the idea becomes a machine that makes the art. Conceptual art is not necessarily logical. So don't talk about logic when you talk about conceptual art. Talk about concept. Logic is not something that will stand the ground when it comes to conceptual art. The ideas need to be complex, but they could be. Not necessarily be complex, but as simple as Duchamp's, but with a layered meaning. As I said, that it was reversing, it was subverting it was putting upside down the entire canon of Western art with this history of 5,000 or 4,000 or 10,000 years. Another definition that I want to read you is from Lucy Leppard. Lucy Leppard writes a beautiful book in which she talks about the six years of conceptual art. She says, conceptual art for me means work in which the idea is paramount. And the material form is secondary. As I said previously, that the idea takes precedence over the material. Lightweight, ephemeral, cheap, unpretentious, and dematerialized. Now let me explain a little bit about what she means. Ephemeral, cheap, unpretentious, and at the same time dematerialized. So when we talk about art, Essentially, we talk about painting and sculpture, or for that matter, to some extent, about architecture. But here we are talking about visual art, so let's consider the painting as an example. When we talk about a painting, the essential things that come in our mind while executing an idea is the canvas, the brush, the color, the linseed oil, the turpentine, or if it is acrylic, the water. 
or if it is a watercolor. So according to the mediumatic range or the range of the media, it the idea of a painting unfolds in a heart. But here the question is the question she is raising is about dematerialize. So that it is not conceptual art is not falling back on the idea of paint and brush and canvas, but at the same time it could be. But it could at the same time be a culmination, a combination of many things, a sculptural form, a painting, an installation, an ephemeral, something that can't be sold. But at the same time, that can be seen as a work of art. She further talks and says, this has not kept commentators over the years from calling virtually anything on conventional mediums conceptual art. Well, that's a problem here in that area that anything and everything that falls under the idea of conceptual art has to be taken very consciously and take it, has to be taken consciously by taking into account all the merits, demerits that define the conceptual art as such and such. There has been a lot of bickering about what conceptual art is, was, who began it, who did it, who did what when with it, what its goals, what its goals, philosophy and politics were and might have been. I was there, but I don't trust my memory. I don't trust anyone else's either. And I trust even less the author authoritative overviews by those who were not there. This is the quote from Lucy Lippard. Now, the, another quote comes from conceptual art is the first of all a conceptual art. Another quote which is from Henry Flint. He says, conceptual art is first of all an art of which the material is concepts. So again, as I said that the previously the material had taken precedence over the idea that you would have thought immediately before making a painting that where to get canvases from, where to get colors, which colors to use, what about the temperature, should I use acrylic or oil, should I do it in watercolor, or a gauche, or in collage, or in something else. So material was the first thing that comes to one's mind when one thinks of uh, ideas beyond conceptual art. But in conceptual art, as Henry puts it, the idea is the material first. The material that it is executed in, the material that it is translated in, Come secondary. He says that for music, as he says, conceptual art is first of all an art of which the material is concept, as the material of, for example, music is sound. Now, this is a very crucial statement that when you talk about music producing sounds, we talk about, we actually think about instruments. What does a tabla do? What does a tanpura do? What does a harmonium do? What does a guitar do? And etc. etc. But here it's what if a tabla is there and you don't play it? Is music there? No, the instrument is there, the material is there. The music is not there. So what happens when I am with a guitar here not playing it? No, there's no music. That means material is not primary. I knowing to play a guitar is important and more important what I am playing on it and how am I uh, how am I dealing with the guitar is important rather than thinking about what to play it on. He further goes concept art is a kind of art of which the material is language. So language is another important aspect of art that in terms of when we talk about language it's not talking about text in the strictest sense of the word. Flint further tells us that concept art is a kind of art of which the material is language. Now language becomes a very crucial part of conceptual art when one deals with the discourse of conceptual art both visually as well as textually. What is language here? Language is not something that I am speaking with you. Language is not something that I am trying to communicate my thoughts uh, so that you can understand them. Language is here something very broad like material is very broad, language is something very broad. Language is a point, language is a medium here. Even he says the material is language. So the language is the idea through which, uh, the idea which is communicated in a certain language to you 
where the material is not becoming essential. So the urinal is not essential to Drisham. What is essential is the language which has been put in place of art that it is such and such. The language through which the artistic ideas are communicated where it is always that the material takes supremacy. Another definition and perhaps the last one is by Robert Berry, 1969. I chose, I chose to work with inert gas because there was not the constant presence of a small object or device that produced the art. Inert gas is a material that is imperceivable. It doesn't combine with any other element. That is what gas does. Now, here. So, when people are transcending the boundaries of material, it's also a point when one has to consider that not only is the material convenient for an artist who wants to communicate an idea and keep it there for centuries and centuries, the ephemerality of the material, when we say the expiry date of the material, or to what extent does the material last? For example, what Robert Barry is telling us that he works with gas. Now, how does an artist work with, work with gas and justify the work of art? Because it will be very temporary. The gas is exhausted, the work goes off. It's nowhere, it vanishes from the scene. So how does one come to terms with the idea of art here? Again, let me remind you that it is about the concept, not the material. It's not about creating museum objects. Conceptual art is entire museum, it is entire art, it's entire, entire history, it's entire aesthetics. It's entire everything that can be sold or bought. So the time period that has been identified by the commentators and historians of art and theoreticians for conceptual art is the time between 1966 to 1972. It is considered as the key phase of development, a period that includes with the canonization of conceptualism in the controversial International Survey Exhibition, Documenta V in Germany, and the first publication of Lucy Lebard's often cited book, The Maps, Conceptual, that maps conceptual art six years. The materialization, the dematerialization of the art object from 1966 to 1972, of which we read a quote from. So to define to the keep so one of the <clears throat> pressing questions is that how would you circumvent the definition of conceptual art? So here is something that we'll look at and try to understand what it is, though a crude example, but always cited one. It is the easiest way to introduce conceptual art in the way that one could consider some of the examples that have been given by, that have been cited by the theoreticians. One of the prime examples is Robert Rauschenberg sending a telegram to the gallery I.S. Klett, which says, and I quote, this is a portrait of Iris Klett, if I say so. What does that mean? This is a portrait of Iris Klett, Klett if I say so. It means that if an artist defines something as something, something as, an, as a work of art, it, it occupies the insignia of the artist. It's, it's a telegram that has been sent. So here again, if an artist, you or me or somebody else is asked to exhibit, even in the current times, a work of art, we'll obviously think of a sculpture or a painting or a print or a photograph or sometimes maybe a video. But we can't go beyond this since the notions of art that we have inherited from the history of art do not allow us to think beyond the conventional patterns that have been set, as I said, in the, by the 19th century aestheticians in the Europe. Rauschenberg was actually challenging them. 
Another example, if we take the very recent example, which falls under the conceptual art, is Marina Abramovic, the performance artist. Now, this is very important that in 2010, Marina Abramovic, the performance artist, was present in the gallery of, in the Museum of Modern Art, New York, called MoMA, for one month. And in this one month, what she does, or what she did, was that she simply sat on a chair. And then, you, me, and anybody else as a viewer, could go and look into her eyes, sit in front of the chair, facing Marina Abramovic, look into her eyes and say nothing, or perhaps say something. It was open to interpretations, but what is crucial here is the title. The title says, the artist is present. Now let me deconstruct this title and try to unpack the layered meaning of the work of art that was consistent there for one month when an artist claimed the gallery space, sat in the middle of the gallery, in the middle of a museum which is so famous for its huge collection of modern and postmodern art. What is it? What do we, what does Marina mean when she says the artist is present? Of course she means the absence of the artist. The absence of the artist from the history of art, from the history of museums, has been haunting the spaces. What, do, what does that mean? Which, what does that mean? That means that the artist's work is given preference over the artist's persona in the museum. Again, conceptual art is rejecting the notions of product but saying that art cannot be only done by producing a, an object, but it could be also done by looking into the eyes of the artist in a museum space. But there is much more to it. It doesn't end here. It is also that an artist is staying in the museum face to face, which rarely happens except the inaugurations that a viewer is part of where the artists usually if alive come and then you don't see them but what happens to a painting when leonardo da vinci is not there and we are witnessing mona lisa in louvre museum in paris or what happens when we look at the prado museum and we see picasso's guernica we don't see the artist but we see the impression of the artist there a time that he has spent in front of an artwork that he or she created. But here, the actual time is spent in front of the artist, which is registered by the artist as well as by the viewer. But above all, the artist is claiming the space, the gallery space, which, is, which was until Marina's show, until Marina's performance, only open to the works of art. And when the works of art enter a gallery or a museum space, art has become second. But here, there is no work of art on the walls. There is a marked boundary, a marked space in which Marina is sitting, dressed in red and sometimes in white. For whole one month, she lives in this gallery. And lakhs and lakhs of people come to visit her. There's nothing on the walls that they are invited to see. There's nothing on the floor lying on the pedestals that one is invited to watch. There's nothing on the screen on the walls. There's no film running. There are no videos. But an artist sitting in the middle of the gallery. For the first time, a gallery becomes animate with the presence of artist who is the center of focus, the artist whose persona is considered behind each and every work that he or she produces. But there's no work that Marina has contributed to MoMA. She's just sitting there. She's communicating with the artist. She's communicating with the viewer. She's communicating with whosoever. 
but not communicating by means of language. She's not using any words. She's communicating just by sitting there. But there's more to it, as I said. This is also an artist whose presence in that space, in that overwhelming confine, in those overwhelming walls of museum, has animated the space that she has occupied. Unlike the artworks where you go and see the artworks, here is an artist who is coming to you and saying, hey, look, I'm here. See in my eyes. What is the concept here? When the artist is present, that means in the history of art, in the history of art until 2010, the artist barely was present in the gallery, only the artwork was. But here the artwork is happening. It's not happened. Another aspect to it, that previously the artwork had happened. Then it was exhibited. Here the artwork is happening. It's evolving. How is it evolving? It's with every individual's own experience that he or she gets from confronting Marina Abramovich for a while or for a minute, for a day, for some seconds, perhaps. The art here is not a product that has been put on the walls and you are made to do rounds in the gallery to look at each and every detail. You are taken to the middle of the gallery where the artist is sitting, only sitting, but his presence is extremely charged, charged with the historical narratives, as I said, about the essence of the artist. That's one of the factors that we discussed in postmodernism. Now, what becomes of Marina? Marina here is the artist and the artwork, but at the same time, the viewer who confronts her becomes the artist and the artwork himself or herself. This is conceptual art, which is not believing in producing the material. And these experiences are so varied. Of course, your experience while confronting to Marina will be very different from mine. And my experience while confronting Marina will be very different of, uh, from the others. That is concept. That's concept. That's conceptual art. When you become participatory, when you are participating in an artwork that is shaping up, when you are not producing something that could be taken home in your lap or in the dicky of your car. No. It is something that lives on with you, that evolves the more and more you think about it, the more and more you think about it, the more and more you go deeper inside the history of art and look at the artworks and think, where is art here? The artwork for one month that Marina created was evolving. It was not evolving just by a mere encounter, but every encounter, every person who encountered Marina was creating a different artwork in their minds. That's the basic idea behind conceptual art. That it can be anything but the Essential condition is that it has to be concept-based. Let's now come to the conclusionary part of this lecture and look at some of the key ideas that are ascribed or that are uh, uh, that are connected with the conceptual art. And these are some of them. Conceptual artists link their work to a tradition of mass solution, and this is the reason that I would that I put. Uh, that I stressed toward Duchamp's work because he seems to be one of the forerunners of the conceptual art, whose ready-mates had rattled the very definition of work of art which we discussed at length about the notions, about uh, the ideas that what art it is, what, what art is and is not. Like Duchamp, before them they abandoned beauty, rarity and skill as measures of art. So handiwork was also not considered something that is an essential factor in the making of 
art in the making of an artwork it is it it is necessarily but well, it is necessary it is a required thing skill of course is there but it is not the ultimate thing that is required to create a work of art and especially with the industrialization and the scientific advances people have started taking the help of machines and that you can see when you confront the work of artists like Marcel Duchamp or any any other conceptual artist conceptual artists recognize that all art is essentially conceptual to them whatever is produced or what should be produced is conceptual in the in, in, in primarily is conceptual and nothing beyond that in order to emphasize this many conceptual artists reduce the material presence of the work to an absolute minimum a tendency that some have referred to as the dematerialization of art as i talked about that some of them including uh, uh marcel duchamp and uh, joseph bias and uh, uh, people like barbara kruger and artists like uh, cindy sherman artists like uh, uh, bioko ono and art musicians like john cage a uh, Piero Manzoni and others created works where they didn't emphasize on the material part of it sometimes for example Manzoni signed the bodies of the models the naked bodies of the models if you can say as you can see in the pictures uh, he signed them he, uh, as an artist and let them go and people who participated you know in in the in the world okay a tendency that left to, so the idea was to dematerialize to liberate art from the burdens of history to liberate art from the burden of materialization conceptual artists were influenced by the brutal simplicity of minimalism now this is another movement that you must have learned about that how minimalists reduce the material especially uh, uh, the uh, Karl Andre the minimalist who just placed bricks on the surface of gallery and uh, claim that it is an egalitarian artwork because you can see it from any 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 corner or you can see it uh, from any any place and uh, from top from bottom you can see it uh, you can go around the work in 360 degrees it doesn't make any effect because the work looks so equal but they rejected minimalism at the same time that's one thing you know which happened with conceptual art that they didn't embrace the conventions of sculpture that were at the heart of minimalistic approach of art for conceptual artists art uh, need not look like a traditional work of art or even take a physical form at all as i said with marina abramovich the performance didn't take uh, a physical form the artwork was not created yet an artwork happened and especially uh, you know with people who signed balloons uh, or who signed cans of shit or who performed uh, just you know for the sake of creating an artwork which is not essentially reduced to a material or a project that could be sold or bought the analysis of art that was pursued by many conceptual artists encouraged them to believe that if the artist began the artwork the museum or the gallery and the audience in some way completed it this was another thing you know we discussed uh, previously about the participatory mode that the audience is equally responsible for completing a work of art it is not only the artist who makes the absolute work because if an artist makes an absolute work without the participation of audience it remains incomplete because ultimately it's meant to be made public the, this category of conceptual art is known as institutional critique which can be understood as a part of an ever greater shift away from emphasizing the object based work of art to pointedly expressing cultural values of society at large another thing they believed it uh, believed in that much of the conceptual art if we say is self conscious or self referential like duchamp and other modernists they created art that is about art you know what is that mean it's not art for art's sake 
It's not at all that's a modernistic paradigm that art happens for art's sake. The art which is about art, where art is experienced, where Marina Abramovich which starts from one end of the wall of China and Ule, her partner, starts from the other end of the wall of China. They travel by foot and meet at a point where they separate again. This is the kind of way that, that the, 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 the art is experienced by the artist coming across diverse trajectories which help in the making of an artwork conceptually, not merely materialistically. Now, let me give you a brief example uh, of, of another stalwart of conceptual art called Joseph Kosuth. Joseph Kosuth is one of the remarkable figures of conceptual art because he did something very extraordinary that at the first place baffled the viewers and at the same time shattered the notions of art like Duchamp. So here is a description of Joseph's work. A physical chair sits between a still as a physical chair sits between a scale photograph of a chair and a printed definition of the word chair, emblematic of conceptual art. One and three chairs makes people question what constitutes the chair. The physical object, the idea, the photograph, or the combination of all three. Joseph Kosser once wrote, the art I called conceptual art is such because it is based on an inquiry into the nature of art. Thus it is a thinking out of the implications of all aspects of conceptual art. One and three chairs denies the hierarchical distinction between an object and a representation. Just as it implies a conceptual work of art can be object or representation in various forms. This work harks back to and also extends the kind of inquiry into the presumed priority of object or representation that had been earlier proposed by surrealist René Magritte in his treachery of images with, the, with its image of the pipe over the inscription which is called This is not a pipe. Now these are some of the examples of the artists who really contributed in shaping up the idea of conceptual art and immensely displayed a rigor in materializing their ideas by not taking material construction or material aspect of it into primary concerns and laying out laying down the laying the stress and laying down the stress on the ideation uh, idea the and laying emphasis on the ideation and not on the material not on the objectivity not on something that could be bought or sold for your reference you can you can also watch you can also look uh, for the works of Joseph Kosuth, you can also look at the works of Marina Abramovich, you can also look at the works of Joseph Baez, you can also look at the works of uh, Piero Manzoni, you can also look at land art, installation art, video art, all this falls under the ambit of conceptual art. Thank you very much.